Welcome to the first page, our video series featuring Thomas C. Foster, author of How to Read Literature Like a Professor. With Professor Foster as our guide, discover that the first page, first paragraph, even sometimes the first sentence of a novel, is the key for what is to come. The opening provides up to 18 important clues to the rest of the novel. Things like style, tone, mood, narrative identity and attitude, theme, and point of view are all here. So watch carefully as Foster delves into the first page of such HarperCollins classroom favorites as To Kill a Mockingbird, Their Eyes Were Watching God, and The Bean Trees. Demian by Hermann Hesse. Hello again and welcome. Every narrative strategy is an act of invention. This is not especially profound. Simply put, whenever you tell a story, you have to make up the manner of its telling. What you're creating, after all, is a strategy, and those do not grow in fields. We can add that every last one is different, just as every novel or story is different. Will your omniscient narrator be impersonal, like many of George Eliot's, or companionable and amused, like Henry Fielding's? Or if you use a first-person narrator, even beyond the question of whether it's a major or a minor character, what is she like as a storyteller? How does she feel about her material? So much to think about before the first word is fired in anger. And you have to make these decisions for every outing, no matter how large or small. One could make the argument that you might as well go big and face the moment of choice less frequently. That said, I'd like to consider quite a small novel, Herman Hesse's little gem, Damien. In a prologue that was added some 40 years after the book's publication in 1919, he, or rather his main character, Emil St. Clair, takes on the problem of telling a personal story. I cannot tell my story without reaching a long way back. If it were possible, I would reach back farther still, into the very first years of my childhood and beyond them into distant ancestral past. So far, so good. Many a narrator trolls the past for material, but he continues. Novelists, when they write novels, tend to take an almost godlike attitude toward their subject. I am as little able to do this as the novelist is, even though my story is more important to me than any novelist's is to him. And now we're in a different space. I'm real, Emil Sinclair is saying. And I have to tell a story from the inside, unlike these spoiled novelists who act like they know everything. Of course, Emil is a creation of Hesse, but that fact is problematized by the fact that the book was initially published in German with Emil Sinclair listed as author. In a few years, the real author revealed himself, but the narrative strategy is no less insistent for that. Sinclair will have to dispense with the tricks and gimmicks of fiction, which is, for Hesse, a pretty good gimmick. Nothing but truth and fact for him, or for any of us stuck with recounting our own existence. Now, I don't know about you, but the more someone maintains his truthfulness, the more inclined I am to doubt it. He may be sincere, may even be as honest as he can be, but some part of me wants to know whether what he's conveying is the truth, his truth, or any truth at all. And I'll be a tough sell because as readers, we learn a basic truth of our own about first-person narrators. Stop believing them as soon as you encounter the word I. From the novelist's perspective, the whole reason for using a narrator with a speaking part in this story is to hide things. If total revelation is the goal, it can be much better accomplished with a third-person narrator. In this case, Emil Sinclair will often be mistaken, as we all are about experiences. We may side with him, hope for his growth, thrill with his successes, and suffer with his failures. We just shouldn't take him at his word. For more information about the first page, please visit www.harperacademic.com dot com.